Hey y'all, Dixie here. Recently I took my Mount Laurel Designs Pro Rain Poncho Tarp out for a test run during a multi-day backpacking trip in the Tetons area. So today I wanna tell y'all about that experience. Some of y'all might remember that during my through hike of the Penhody Trail, I had initially started oh testing God. the poncho tarp, but it was freezing cold. And honestly, I was kind of miserable trying to learn a new skill in the middle of all of that. So I decided to move it to the back burner until I could go out in more favorable conditions. And I was finally able to do that. I've already done an introductory video on this tarp, but in case you didn't see it, or if you want a refresher on the specs, I got on the Mountain Laurel Designs website to check and see if the pricing was still the same on the Pro Rain Poncho and if they still had the options because previously it was available in DCF. And I noticed that it is no longer for sale on their website. So I don't know if that's something that will come back in the future, but I still felt like this video would be relevant because there are other poncho tarp designs out there and it might be something that people are interested in as far as just the idea in general. I decided to pair the poncho tarp with the super light solo bivy, also made by Mount Laurel Designs because I wanted the added protection from the weather, in case it was raining, if I had any sort of splash up from the ground under the tarp. Also to add a little bit of warmth because I'm a cold sleeper. So on a breezy night, that would help protect me from the wind in addition to the tarp. And finally for bug protection because nobody wants to be feasted on while they're sleeping. It also came with a tube of seam sealer. And at the time I was kind of disappointed that they didn't already do that or that there wasn't an extra fee you could pay for seam sealing service before it was sent to you. But in hindsight, I'm actually glad because it forced me to learn the skill of seam sealing, which really wasn't a big deal at all, like I thought it was gonna be. But you know, it's kind of an intimidating thing because you are at your own mercy as far as protecting yourself from the elements and not having a leaky shelter. But if you think about it, that is a skill that's good to learn so that you know, you're not at the mercy of somebody else doing it either. But it really wasn't a big deal at all. All there really is to it is brushing on the seam sealer on the stitched areas and just doing a short section at a time, making sure the material is good and stretched out and allowing that to dry before moving on to the next section. So the total weight with the tarp, the cord that comes with the tarp and the bivy is 22.2 ounces. The total cost of the whole shebang is $434. And I know at first it seems like, dang, that's a whole lot of money for a tarp setup that's, you know, 22.2 ounces. Tents for that price point aren't really much heavier than that weight. But you have to think about with the price and the weight that this is not only your shelter, but your rain gear. Now I wanna talk about the experience of the Pro Rain Poncho Tarp, but first I wanna talk about it in terms of a shelter with the bivy setup. One thing about the Poncho Tarp that is fun is there's a lot of versatility to it. Now at the beginning for me, that was frustrating because I'm so used to having a shelter like a tent that's just, it's a very straight, forward thing. It sets up like this and that's it. But with the poncho tarp, you can set it up using trees. You can use your trekking poles. You can set it up very low to the ground or up high to where you're having more of a cowboy camping experience with just something over you. So there isn't really one straightforward way. And so for me, that was a little confusing and frustrating from the beginning. And I really was terrible at setting it up and I still kind of am, but it's, fun to learn a new skill. But I guess overall, what I'm trying to say, it is it is a very versatile type shelter. And for some people that might be awesome. And for others, it might be frustrating. I found that overall, as long as it wasn't storming, I did like it set higher up. I didn't really like the limited space of when I did set it up pretty low to the ground. Uh, like the first night I slept in it. So most of the Tetons trip, I had it up pretty high, but I always had it up higher than I did the first night that I tested it at home in my backyard. I was a little bit worried that I would feel claustrophobic in the bivy particularly, but because of the cord 
that attaches to the face area of the bivy and can be attached to the underside of the poncho tarp. There's a little hook there. With the mesh pulled up off of my face, I really didn't feel claustrophobic at all. And it gave me, you know, a sense of security really. And then also you get to choose what type of netting you would like on the bivy. You can go with the full upper section is mesh, or you can go with the half moon design, which will help block the wind a little bit more, keep some added warmth in, uh, but still give you some sort of ventilation. I went with the full mesh because I wanted to make sure it was well ventilated enough that condensation wouldn't be an issue. And I thought that it would kind of help with the claustrophobia feeling. But in hindsight, it was a little breezy on me and I could have probably prevented more of that with the way I had the tarp set up. But if I was to order this again, I would probably go with the half moon shape because I didn't really feel claustrophobic in it. And also I'm a cold sleeper and then that would have helped keep you know, the breeze off of my face more while I slept. Also, I found that I had enough room for stuff inside the bivy with me if I wanted something in there so I didn't have to open it up in the middle of the night and get a drink of water and then, you know, close it back up so I could have a water bottle, my cell phone, and any items that I wanted some waterproofing redundancy in case it was raining so nothing got splashed. Or if you're worried about critters running off with stuff, while you sleep, there are some things that you can put inside the bivy with you. And it definitely helps to create space in there if you stake out the four corners. It does come with little loops on each corner, so you can do that. One night, I ended up robbing the two stakes from the foot area of the bivy because, rookie mistake, I didn't bring enough stakes for all of the edges of the tarp and my bivy. So I reinforced the tarp because I knew a storm was brewing and, and it had started getting really windy. So I woke up and I felt something hitting my feet and it was hail. My legs had slid out from under the poncho tarp and were getting hailed and, and rained on. And I had a big old puddle of water on the bivy, but it actually kept me dry. So honestly, I would not go out with a poncho tarp set up knowing that I could have bad weather without having a bivy. And it uh, definitely had some splash on it uh, while it was raining. Again, yes, I probably could have set up the tarp more tightly to the ground to help prevent some of that. Uh, but for myself and being a beginner with this, I just, I think it's a really great idea to have a bivy to help protect you from the moisture getting onto your sleeping bag. Before I went to sleep at night, I did miss the full space of having everything spread out in my tent, especially after it had been raining during the day. You know, just getting in the tent and being able to put things out in their spots and kind of reassess. Plus things get more dirty under the poncho tarp. It's just when the ground's wet, grit and stuff will stick to your stuff that you have laid out under there. You do have some room to work with, but I found that it helped having, I had a, a large Ziploc bag that I was able to put things on, or if you have stuff sacks, you know, just being able to keep your stuff off the ground directly. But you could also use something like an emergency space blanket or a piece of Tyvek if you wanted to, or, you know, just whatever. But I think having something to put your stuff on when you're hanging out up under the tarp is nice, especially when the ground is damp. Another thing that I was worried about in terms of the bivy was condensation. And living on the East Coast, that's, that's a big thing. So out in a more arid Tetons area, I was afraid that unless it rained, I really wasn't gonna get a good test on that. And at first the weather was showing no rain for the Tetons area and thankfully it did rain and actually quite a bit while I was out there. And it's funny, you don't think that you want rain on a backpacking trip, but I wanted to make sure I had a good test on this. And I didn't have any issues with condensation at all inside the bivy. It kept my bag dry, like I mentioned before. And even while it was actively raining outside, I could feel the inside of the bivy and my bag and there was no dampness. I was actually very, very surprised about that. I did enjoy the more open experience of 
the tarp, especially in such a beautiful area. So as soon as I woke up, I was opening the bivy because you're kind of restricted in there. And it was like I was automatically out in nature. You know, I could see the mountains. I was a part of everything. Whereas when I tent camp, I tend to stay in my little bubble for as long as possible until I start hiking in the morning. So I did like that part of it. But on the flip side of that, if I was in colder temperatures, then I would really appreciate that microclimate of my tent. I mean, yes, the tent is still pretty well ventilated, but you do trap in more warmth. And because I do like being in my little bubble before I start hiking in the morning, you know, in the poncho tarp, if I was in colder temperatures, like on the Pinhoti Trail, I just, I freeze my butt off. And to me, it would not be enjoyable. Not to mention that my limited tarping experience uh, would probably put me in a situation where I would be more um, at risk of hypothermia or something like that. So, I mean, in the Tetons, it was in the mid 40s or so, and I was able to stay warm. But, you know, much colder than that, I don't think that I would enjoy the poncho tarp as much as I would a tent for sure. Now let's talk about the poncho tarp as rain gear, the poncho itself. It definitely wasn't as protective from the rain as a rain jacket and rain pants would be. There are pretty big open spaces on the sides of the poncho, even after you snap it up. It's much more ventilated than rain pants and a rain jacket. Um, but as far as my leggings staying dry, you know, they, they did get damp. Uh, but I wouldn't take the poncho tarp, as I've mentioned before, out in cold enough temperatures where I would necessarily want all of that warmth of the rain pants. So if I had been out there hiking and I had a rain jacket and rain pants, I probably wouldn't have put on the rain pants because then I'd be soaking wet with sweat. And honestly, most of the time, that's what happens with rain gear anyway. So I feel like, you know, there's a point to where it helps keep you dry. But then after that point, when you're hiking enough, you either get wet with sweat or from the rain coming in anyway. So the poncho definitely helped keep me warm for when the temperature dropped while it was raining and, and while I was damp and everything. Um, but I felt like for its purpose, it did fine. Also having a poncho is nice because you can put it over your pack as a redundancy to help keep the stuff in your pack dry. Although I ended up wearing the poncho under my pack. I just really didn't think about it and threw it on over my rain gear. Um, but one thing that is nice about hiking in a poncho is you can pee under it. You don't really have to worry about anyone walking up and seeing you drop your drawers if you're a girl. I know guys don't necessarily have that issue as much, but either way, you're protected from the sights of anybody else. Now, I know a lot of folks were wondering, well, what about the transition from wearing the rain gear and setting it up as a shelter while it's still raining or the reverse going from having it set up like a tarp while it's raining and then turning it into the poncho. And honestly, that wasn't too bad. Uh, like I mentioned, most of the time, if it's been raining all day, you're probably kind of damp anyway. And I always have a set of warm, dry clothing in my pack to sleep in if I'm going to be in cooler temperatures at all or even if I'm not I always have something dry to sleep in that's just important to me um, so having the wet clothes while I'm setting up the shelter you know was an issue for me it kind of sucked to pull it off because it was trapping in some warmth but as far as the process goes it was real simple just unsnap the snaps on either side of the poncho and then roll up the hood area and snap it closed and then set it up like you would a normal tarp. But as far as setting up the rest of camp, like all the stuff that I don't want to get wet, I just treated it like I would if I had set up my tent, then threw my pack in there and, you know, finished putting out my bedding and all of that stuff. For packing it up, I just packed up everything under the tarp while it was raining my sleeping bag, you know, anything that I wanted to make sure I kept dry. Then throw my pack out in the rain because of course everything's waterproofed in there at that point. And then again, it's not the end of the world if I step out quickly from under the tarp, pull up the stakes and then throw on the poncho 
because those clothes that I have on don't have to stay perfectly dry. And if they get a little damp, they're gonna get damp while I'm hiking anyway. And you can always try to find a spot under trees to camp while it's raining just to help with that because that way even if the rain's drumming down pretty hard if you're not in a wide open area the leaves will help catch some of that either while you're setting up the tarp once you've gotten to camp uh, or packing up in the morning one thing that i did not do before i went out there that i wish i would have is attach my cord to the little mini beaners that i bothered to purchase and carry uh, so that it would be easy to take the guy line off of the tarp so it's not dangling while I'm wearing the poncho uh, and then easy to reconnect and stake out again. It's not the end of the world especially if you're really good at tying knots and really quick at it. Myself I'm kind of like eh, with knots uh, so that's something that I think would make that whole process more efficient if I were to use it going forward. The only main downside to having your rain gear up as your shelter is if you need to get out and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night when it's raining so you've got those warm dry clothes on and now you got to climb out of your sleeping bag and either decide to put the wet clothes on that you were hiking in just so you can go to the bathroom or whether you're going to run out and risk getting those warm dry clothes wet i guess you could just take it off and run out there buck naked but uh you know but honestly, if I was in that situation, I didn't find myself in that situation, thankfully. But if it was a number one, I'd probably just squat and pee right up under my tarp. All right, so overall thoughts and summary on the poncho tarp concept in general. I think it really boils down to the type of experience you're looking for. If you're wanting to crush miles and therefore you're gonna be spending less time in camp and you're more worried about saving weight, then the poncho tarp definitely makes sense because it's not something that you can necessarily just lounge around in and you know it's super spacious like a larger tent uh, but it does save the weight of having separate rain gear and a shelter. I think for me going forward I'm still a tenter <laughs> but I did appreciate the challenge of learning how to mess with tarps a little bit you know I've always shared information about tarps from other people's experiences but at least now I've got some experience of my own. I understand that it's more limiting having the poncho tarp because they tend to be much smaller than a larger tarp so maybe that's something I'll test out in the future uh, to see if I can't find some middle ground because I definitely do think in warmer climates that tarping can be more fun but I do like having that false sense of security that my tent offers, my own little private space to kind of separate me from outside, even though I'm still smack dab in the wilderness and you know that little thin tent wall isn't really protecting me from anything. But I did enjoy this experience and the challenge of learning something new. And who knows, if I keep adding camera equipment to my pack, then I might be forced to go with something more lightweight that saves me the weight of rain gear too. All right, y'all, well, that is all I have for you today. If you've got any questions about the Mountain Laurel Designs Pro Rain Poncho Tarp that I did not answer in today's video, feel free to leave those in the comments below, and we will see y'all next time.